This is video number four for section 11.3, Examples with Circles. I've gone ahead and uh, copied down here our general equation of a circle. So letter A says, uh, here's the equation of a circle just being handed to us. And you can see if you compare this to the general, it's in that same format. So I know that it is a circle. The first thing I'm being asked to do is to write down the center. This doesn't re really require any work. You're just comparing this to the general equation. Remember the center is the H and the K. H and K are the numbers that come right after those built-in minus signs. Well, it looks like then my H would be 3, right? X minus 3, just like X minus H. The k in this problem is a little bit trickier. You might be tempted to say, oh, the k is 1. But that would not be correct because of the built-in minus sign. If k was 1, this would say y minus 1. Well, how could, the k, how could this uh, minus sign have been changed to a plus? The only way that could have happened is if somebody had inserted a negative number in place of the k, then the built-in minus and this negative would have wiped each other out and created a plus. So that means the k in this particular problem is negative 1. We had this issue when we dealt with parabolas earlier in the semester, and you just had to train your brain to remember that the coordinates here are the opposite of what you are seeing because of the built-in minus sign. Okay, another issue that's a little bit tricky is the radius. Uh, the radius is the r, and again, it might be tempting to write down 4 for the radius. That is not correct. The radius is not what's staring at you in the face. This 4 there, that's not the radius. It's the r squared. It's the radius squared. If you want the radius, you're going to have to solve this for r. It's very easy square root square root don't worry about the plus or minus the radius is always a positive number because it's a distance the radius we just figured out is 2 uh, essentially it will always be the square root of whatever number you're looking at uh, over here okay well once you have the center and the radius sketching a graph of these circles by hand is really very very easy I would say uh, mark on the center the center is not technically a part of the circle, but I think it's good to include in your sketch. And then we know that the radius is 2. This just means from the center, I need to go out 2 units in every direction. Well, it's very hard for me to mark that diagonally, but it's easy for me to go left, right, up, and down. And so that's what I'll do. I'll go 2 to the right. I'll go 2 to the left. I'll go 2 down. I'll go 2 up, and then I'll do the best job I can to connect these dots with a circle, and I'm done. This circle is the graph of the original equation that we had started with. When you're doing this in the homework, uh, my math lab is actually very user-friendly with this. They are going to have you graph these things. Uh, as you've graphed other things this semester. When you open up the grapher tool in my math lab, the first thing you're going to do is click on the picture of the circle. Just like before, you've clicked on the picture of the line or the picture of the parabola. Look for the picture of the circle. Then they need you to click in the center. And then finally, they need you to click one point that's actually on the circle and the computer will do the rest for you. So for example, if this problem had been on the homework, you would choose the circle picture, you would click the center point, and then just click one of these other four points, and the computer will do the rest in terms of filling in the circle uh, for you. Okay, let's go ahead and look down then at letter B. Uh, I've got uh, another circle equation here. This uh, appears to be a similar example to letter A. Once again, I think we're being asked to start with the center and the radius. It's all about comparing what they give me to the general equation. I can see that it matches. Uh, I just need to pick out the H, the K, and the R. Well, the center is where we're starting. H is the number that's after the built-in minus sign with the x, that's going to be in this first parenthesis, there's that plus 2, 
which alerts me to the fact that the H must have been a negative 2, right? the opposite of what I'm seeing. The K looks kind of funny this time. I mean, I'm looking at this second part. It, it feels like this second parentheses has collapsed somehow. Well, I just need to be thinking about what number could somebody fill in for K that would wipe out this entire parentheses. Maybe you can figure out what it is. It must just be 0, because Y take away 0 would be just y. And then you'd be left with simply y squared. So when the parentheses collapses like this, it tells me that the constant there was just a 0. The center of this circle then is uh, negative 2 comma 0. How about the radius? Well, again, it's not 10. 10 is not the r. 10 is the r squared. If you want to get to the r, you have to square root that value r in this case would be the square root of 10. I don't have any way to simplify that. I'll just have to, to write that down. That would be the radius of the circle, the square root of 10. I think our next step is to draw a picture once again. Uh, we can just do it the same way we did the last time. I need to mark my center point on there, negative 2 comma 0. And then Let's see, I guess this one, the radius, is a little bit trickier because it's not a nice value. What would probably be a good idea would be to go to the calculator and get an approximation for that value. I got about 3.2. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do this perfectly, but the idea is uh, from the center point, I just need to travel about 3.2 units left, right, up, and down. So 1, 2, 3, and a little bit more and just keep doing that in all four directions. Three and a little bit more is the idea. Uh, three and a little bit more. And then connect those dots in the form of a circle and you'll be done. It's hard to be perfect with this. Just do the best job you can. Um, we now have a sketch of this circle by hand. I think in the computer they probably won't have you do one like this by hand because you really couldn't click in those other points precisely. So I think if they give you one like this in my math lab they would make the picture multiple choice. Let's move on to letter C. I think here we're just going backwards. Uh, now in letter C they're telling us the center and the radius and they want us to write down the equation. Well, as long as I know that general form, uh, this isn't very difficult to do. I'm just filling in the h, the k, and the r. So the general form goes x minus, okay, next comes h. Be careful with all those minus signs. h itself is a negative number. x minus h squared plus y minus, let's see, the k would be 1. So y minus 1 squared equals, don't write 6, right? It's r squared over here. It's 6 squared. You're always expected to clean up these answers, to simplify. So uh, in this first parentheses, those two minus signs plus out. That would be x plus 3 then. I don't see any way to simplify this second part. And then 6 squared is 36. Don't leave it 6 squared. You need to simplify to the 36. Here would be the final answer to this problem. Uh, once you get the hang of these things, you can probably just go straight here. Uh, so don't feel like you have to show every last little bit here. It's pretty easy to just go straight there once you figure out the pattern. Let's go down now to letter D. I think this is another of the same type of example. This one's a little more difficult though. Uh, it's once again find the equation of the circle. They have once again given us the center, uh, but this time they didn't give me the radius. So somehow I'm going to have to figure that out, I think. What they told me instead was they told me an actual point that's on the circle. Okay, why don't we try to draw a quick sketch here of what's going on. So I've drawn on here the center is 4 comma 2. Here's this point negative 2 comma negative 1. This is on the edge of the circle. This is a pretty big circle, right? I mean the radius would be this whole piece right here. The circle must sort of continue up 
along this way and go all the way around the center there. Well, I don't I don't really need to draw the picture to answer this question. I just wanted to uh, show you so you could think about it. Uh, there's two ways I would say that you could approach this. Maybe the way that you might think is, oh, I could just find the distance between the center point that they gave me and that other point that they gave me because the distance between those two points is the radius and and that would certainly work right you could use the distance formula plug in those two points and that would tell you the radius that would be fine but I think the easier way to do it is to use what we've been using all semester long and that is that temporary plug-in idea let me show you that uh, I already know this is a circle I know it's going to fit that same pattern. Most of the information we know already. I can almost write down the entire equation right now. Because I know the center, I know it starts out x minus 4 squared plus y minus 2 squared, right? I, I had my h and k right from the beginning, equals, here's the part I'm not sure what to write down, so I'll just write r squared. Well, all semester long if we've only had one constant left to fill in, the way that we've found it is by simply taking some random xy point, this is an xy point, on the graph, temporarily plugging in those values for x and for y, so that we can solve for the missing constant. That's really all we have to do here. So let's fill in the values, and then I just need to do some simplifying over here on the left. We are just about there. Looks like uh, I get 36 and 9. R squared ends up being 45. Well, here's the great thing. Uh, you're probably expecting me to square root both sides now to find R, and I could totally do that. But remember what the goal was of this problem? I'm just looking for the equation of the circle. R is not what goes in the equation. R squared is what goes in the equation. So there's really no point in me doing any other work. I just figured out that one part that I hadn't known yet. I'm ready to just write down the final answer now. Here's our final answer. Uh, again, we already knew most of it from the very start. We just didn't know the radius. We figured out that r squared was 45. I stuck it in there and I'm finished. If you had done it that other way where you found the distance between these two points using the distance formula, you would have actually found the r itself. You would have then needed to square that value to end up with the r squared which goes in the equation. Finally, I just want to make a brief comment about the graphing calculator. We've been using it so successfully all semester. Well, the calculator is great for graphing functions, but not so great for non-functions. And the reason is the calculator forces you to type in the equation y equals blank. And non-functions, they don't come in that format. Uh, this is a circle. It's a very simple circle. Why don't you see if you can jot down the center and radius of this circle? Hopefully you got 0, 0 for the center. It has to be because uh, there's no parentheses here. So the h and k must have been 0. And then the radius is 1. Not because this is a 1, right? That's the r squared. You have to square root this number, but the square root of 1 happens to be 1. This circle actually has a name. It's called the unit circle. It would be very easy to draw a picture of it. It's about the simplest circle there is, right? Center at 0, 0. Just go out 1 in every direction. Very easy to draw by hand. Well, this would be somewhat challenging to do on the calculator because what I would have to do is I would have to solve this equation for y. That's going to take me a couple of steps. I'd have to begin by subtracting x squared from both sides. And then to get y by itself, I would have to square root each side. Don't forget the plus or minus when you square root each side. And that gives me this final result. This is kind of a mess. What we're saying here is if you wanted to graph this circle in the calculator, it takes two lines. You'd have to go to the y1 line and type plus square root 1 minus x squared. And then you'd have to go to the y2 line and type y equals negative square root 1 minus x squared. You can't even draw it all at once. The plus part would give you the upper half of the circle, and the minus part would then give you the lower half, the negative part of the circle. 
Uh, I'm not even going to go to the calculator right now. I don't think it's worth it. The point I'm trying to make is probably you just want to stick with drawing these things by hand.